Hey there. How's it going, Mike? Good. How are you? Doing fantastic, man. Appreciate the time and uh, won't keep you for too long, but obviously want to get into the tour and talk a little color decay and some other things with you. And, uh, dude, let's start with the tour. Metalcore dropouts, Fit for a King, Counterparks, you guys, uh, Landmarks, all kicking off September 15th, House of Blues, Anaheim, and then September 16th, the next night in L.A. at the Will Turn. Old friends and new friends on this tour, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, somehow we've never toured with counterparts, which seems crazy. Um, Jeremy and Brendan are super close. I've hung out with them a little bit, uh, doing karaoke with Brendan in El Paso, Texas a couple years ago. But um, oh. yeah, yeah. What were you doing uh, karaoke to? Let's see. He was trying to get me to sing, but I wouldn't. I can't remember what he did. I think it was like Third Eye Blind. <laughs> um, turns out he's super, super into karaoke. But uh, yeah, good times. Um, more to be had for sure. What What did you sing? Do you remember what you did sing that night, karaoke? Oh, I did not. I did not. Um, no one wants to hear me sing karaoke, and I definitely don't want to lose my voice via karaoke rather than show. <laughs> Well, I can appreciate that, but I mean, obviously people want to hear you sing and scream. I mean, that's what you do for a living, so. I mean, at a bar, I don't think so. Eh, I feel you, I feel you. I've never done karaoke either, who am I to say? But uh, certainly looking forward to this tour, man. And I imagine like the beginning of the tour is when you're most excited. And at the same time, probably when most things kind of tend to go wrong, first day or two of the tour. Any uh, any stories come to mind of any mishaps, beginning of tour mishaps, something not working, broken, not being there? Anything jump to mind? I mean, it's really not sexy. Um, <laughs> usually it often goes wrong when you have a fly in show more so than when you're starting a tour. Starting a tour is really just get your body acclimated, um, especially when you're you've been yelling for almost 20 years as I have. Um, there are certain things that you just don't think about. Like I get like rib soreness, jaw soreness. Um, definitely, uh, you know, drummers and guitar players have their own muscle woes, but screaming all the time also just works your lungs and whatnot. And there's really just no way to get like work that out. You know, it's not yeah. like you can like jog or go to the gym to scream um so usually that's the that's the tough thing but i'd say more of the uh technical woes happen when you're just flying in for a show rather than when you have the comforts of of a bus and a crew and such yeah imagine uh, like like you said man like knocking the rust off a little bit with your voice and everything and it probably takes a few to to get going and looking forward to this tour because we're going to dig a little deeper into uh color decay at this time around right yeah, yeah. We just uh, we were out with August Burns Red earlier this year in the springtime, um, yeah. had a blast and played a lot of Color Decay. And yeah, we'll be doing the same for um, getting into uh, getting into the next run as well as having the uh, the deluxe edition song. So, yeah, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a busy tour, fun time and co-headline. But you guys are closing every night or is it a rotation? How is that working? Uh, it's a rotation from my understanding. But I mean, Anymore, you know, I just get on the plane, I show up, and uh, hopefully remember the words. <laughs> well, man, I'm looking forward to a headline tour. I feel like I've seen you open way too much and looking into hearing some more of a color decay. And I remember last time around on the zombie tour, there was a little bit of a, a color coordination on stage. Everyone dressed in white. Is there any theme for this tour as a band? I forgot about that. No, I don't think so. Usually, you know, John is such a hard worker. Not only does he put together the set lists, you know, write the songs for the most part, um, but he'll he'll kind of smarten everyone up fashion wise, too. Um, I'm a rather monochromatic individual regardless. So I'm pretty, uh, you know, not not much in the periphery in terms of wardrobe for myself personally. But uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Was there any story behind the all white last time or did that just kind of become a thing? No, I I forget. We had like these patches too that we did that kind of had like that sort of zombie invasion vibe. Um, but uh yeah, we'll we'll see if John has any specific notes, but it can be it can be tumultuous to say the least to get everyone on the same page. <laughs> it's it's 
it's not the funnest part of playing in a band, <laughs> um, getting everyone to kind of vibe the same. I hear you, especially as big a band as you got. But, dude, I, speaking of other band members, I got to say, Giuseppe blew me away on that zombie tour. What a beast that guy is behind the kid. And and for such a tiny kid, he makes it sound so huge. He's special. I've known Giuseppe for a long, long time. One of his early, early Pittsburgh bands um, played our first shows alongside Prada. And um, being a born Pittsburgher myself, I've always just stayed in close contact with most of those guys. And um, when things happened as they did with our former drummer, our founding drummer, um, Giuseppe was the first person I called. And uh, I would have if something happened today, he'd still be the first person I call. He's he's a machine. <laughs> he is. He is a beast, man. Wanted to talk a little color decay. Uh, love the album. One of my favorites of last year. And I was thinking back on the album, and I really feel like we were talking about the zombie tour. I kind of feel like Z2, Zombie 2, kind of was a good precursor to Color Decay. Like a song like Forlorn, I think you guys really kind of found something and set a new direction with you and Jeremy both doing the the clean and the the dirty singing together. I thought it was so freaking cool, man, because usually when you're expressing yourself emotionally through lyrics, there is a a clean there's one side and there's another side there's usually multiple meanings to each uh lyric and in, in each phrase and each sentiment you're trying to get across and i thought it was so cool to hear both of your voices together on the new album color decay well thanks man i appreciate the kind words um yeah jeremy and i have been you know original members of the and it, it's very very natural for us especially with john doing a lot of the engineering as well and knowing how to manipulate both my voice and Jeremy's to get the, you know, the, the desired effect. Um, but yeah, I, I feel very comfortable matching up with Jeremy and we definitely have our system in terms of uh, getting vocals locked in and everything. And um, it just feels perfectly organic to me at this point. Yeah, I love it, man. I ran into Jeremy before Color Decay came out and I said, dude, I love that you guys just harmonizing on different, you know, usually it's it's a, it's two cleans when you hear a harmony together and you doing the dirty along with his clean is just a whole nother level. And I, something I really fell in love with, man, and, and so many great jams on the new album, Salt, Broken, Time, Noise, and then even a, a, a kind of a more serious tune like Cancer. Yeah, um, I've always, the way I've kind of phrased it is just like we've always worked so hard to have to finish off records well and it just it's so hard to maintain people's attention through a whole album and, and close an album with a a single it's actually something we've never done at least that I can recall um cancer was a is a it's a it's obviously a, a difficult subject to approach but um, yeah, once we had that wrapped up and had all the songs together, Cancer just felt like it was the right closer. And um, yeah, I think it definitely pops more than any of our other closers for sure. I love it, man. Great, great tune. And, and uh, you know, every tune on the new album. And it's funny, I always talk about your screams. And when I do so, I, I love the range in your screams. You can do like the heavy, the more guttural, and then the high screams. But I always <laughs> describe it, whether to be friends or talking on the radio I always feel like you're getting stabbed at the same time with the knife being turned at the same time while you're screaming and that's what's so important to me as a vocalist is to believe it and I believe your screams they sound sincere rather than trying to follow some formula or something like that and kind of curious is that just something that you developed on your own did you have any inspiration or you just kind of opened up your mouth and that's what came out I appreciate the kind words um you know I think something I've always kind of kept in the back of my mind is that, you know, we program drums so often these days, you know, guitars are hyper edited. Um, you know, we have layers and layers and layers of, of editing to songs, not just us, but really the whole genre. And if a vocal feels like it could be programmed or, you know, just like tabbed out the same way you can program drums or edit guitars, I, I really just have zero interest in that in terms of my own personal music tastes and um while a lot of my own what i like to listen to is is does not at all directly inform what i do in metalcore and the devil wars prada 
I think a, a big part of it is having a very human sense to the vocal and um and even you know I I love celebrating mistakes celebrating imperfections and yeah. um I I'm I'm certainly intentional about leaving in what you know even the bad stuff or whatever and even when certain things pop to John as he's recording and and putting together the the layers and the tracks um I'm always good with something that's less than perfect yeah the warts and all as they say you know that's that's what rock and roll still needs to be and I love that you're keeping that approach because you're right man everything is pro tools and block walled to death these days and and it's nice to still have that feeling and you can even hear your breath sometimes when you're loading up or finishing a scream and that's the, the, the little imperfections that I love in there and dude I don't know if it's too soon but have you guys started working on new material any follow-up to color decay coming together yet we have um we had a couple sessions in los angeles at the end of june um there's some other demos i could bug john about about getting in on vocals but um yeah right now we're we just came back from mexico city sunday i got home sunday night we played saturday night with our best buds in silverstein and we had to jakarta and singapore here in less than two weeks so i've got my sights on that but finishing the the dropouts tour it's definitely going to be more um, more emphasis on, on more songwriting. Love it, man. Look forward to it. And one other question I wanted to ask, uh, speaking of color decay, the deluxe edition selfishly, cause I've been seeing you guys a ton of times, primarily at house of blues Anaheim. So it got me to thinking the, uh, live version of watchtower on colored decay to deluxe, which tour was that film or recorded at? Was that the zombie tour and opening slot? Do you remember? I don't. You know, what's funny is when the Color Decay Deluxe came out, I had no idea all those songs would be on there. Um, again, I let the professionals handle all the wonderful, important logistics. And anymore, you know, I'm I do my best in in writing vocals and hopefully performing them well on tour and doing my part in in that sense. But between management and Jeremy and John, those guys run things better than I've ever been able to. So, yeah, I I, I haven't heard the deluxe edition <laughs> live songs or whatever, but um, yeah, I, I it was me somewhere. Yeah, that's why I was listening and trying to see if it's me somewhere in there. <laughs> 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 screaming along i guess i have to ask jeremy next time i see him uh about that if, if if it was uh the zombie tour which which one you guys got that from exactly yeah john and jeremy are you know they've got the knowledge i'm just the the puppet up there you know doing my best <laughs> i appreciate all the time mike last couple of things i wanted to hit you with i know you're a big hockey fan right i am i'm a huge hockey guy I mean, the NHL season around the corner. By the time the tour hits, we're into preseason hockey. Any predictions for the upcoming year? And who's your team? Are you Blue Jacket? No, Penguins. Penguins, yeah. I'm from Pittsburgh. I've always been diehard, diehard Penguins fan. Always will be. Very excited to have Eric Carlson. I have I was super excited to get Kyle Dubas in the front office. So um, I'm very excited for my Penguins. I think we're going to see... A lot of teams kind of moving up, a lot of talk around Ottawa and Buffalo and whatnot. We'll see what what they do. I heard a take that was pretty interesting and said the only guaranteed Eastern Conference teams to make the playoffs would have to be the Hurricanes and the Devils. Um, and I think that's actually a really astute sort of presumption. So we'll see how it looks. Devils have definitely been loading up and building a strong young team. As much as I hate to admit it, because they've had the Pittsburgh's number too often. <laughs> um, but yeah, diehard Pens fan, diehard hockey player myself. Try to skate. I'll be on the ice tomorrow morning. Um, I run a hockey brand called Hacksaw. So I I'm I try to be as involved in the game as I possibly can be. And I, I'm a big Ducks fan. I'm one of those guys that's new into hockey, just follow my team. I haven't fully branched out and become an NHL fan, but any thoughts on the Ducks, you being such a big fan? Any thoughts on Zegras? Yeah, Zegras is sick. Um, it just He's just like such a content machine. That's so funny as far as like everything with Biz and Sarah Nurse around EA Sports last season. Um, obviously, his hands are just crazy. Just such a, a skilled dude, but yeah, I I... My girlfriend and I love laughing about Zeke's and just random clips where he's like, 
There's one where he's like eating dinner with like a bachelorette party or something. You know, there was the clips of him on that little tiny four wheeler thing zooming around like he's he's funny. I forget who he someone was chirping him on Instagram and he like popped back off at him in the comments because someone's being all salty about the, you know, the young skill. But um, yeah, McTavish, too. I, I, yeah. I Mason McTavish is a lot of fun. But I mean, John Gibson moving away, but or we'll see where his contract ends up. But he's a Pittsburgher, too. So that's why I was going to um, say maybe Gibson can come play for you in the pens. Let's make a deal. He wants. Uh, out. Yeah, I, I I've been following it. I We don't have the cap for him. And now that we locked in Adelkovic and Jari, that's definitely going to be the tandem, which is definitely a question mark if you're a Penguins fan. Um, But yeah, I, you know. He's a Yinzer and you always have to support him. Maybe he'll find his way in black and gold before it calls it calls it for a career. Probably, probably. I like what you said too. I think Mason Mc as much talk as Zegris gets, I think Mason McTavish is is the star in the future of that franchise for the Ducks. For sure. For sure. Um, excellent hair as well. So <laughs> um yeah, he's special for sure. Love it, Mike. Love talking with you. Last thing I got to hit you with, man. We're an old school radio station. We still do uh, the feature mandatory Metallica every night at 10 p.m., which you're going to be a part of. Imagine you're a Metallica fan. I'm actually not. And now everyone's going to hate me, but I've never uh -huh. been into Metallica. I've, I'm I'm strictly Slayer. So Slayer. Yeah, I just felt like Metallica branched way too off from um, pure thrash. Mm -hmm. Um. But, you know, different strokes for different folks. So not even uh, I, I'm with you there because they lost me when they started getting to load and reload and it took me a while to come back now on the new album. But even those early albums, no love for like Ride the Lightning or Master of Puppets or that era. I mean, those songs are great. Those songs are really, really good. But I can't I can't confess to like voluntarily listening to a Metallica song. I feel like I especially even as a hockey player, like. I get plenty of Metallica in in circulation myself. So, um, yeah, I mean, obviously legendary band all the same. They don't need the support of me to to matter, obviously. Yeah, I mean, they've, they've worked out a pretty good career 40 years into their career, and they're playing two nights in stadiums and no repeat weekend and different sets every night. Pretty amazing. Certainly, certainly. I I, I commend it for sure. What's the Metallica song that does jump into your head when you think Metallica? I'm trying to think because I figured you'd ask me that. I'm trying to think of just <laughs> like one of the bangers that you always hear, like NHL games and whatnot. Like for um, whom the bell tolls or something? And for, for whom the bell tolls is an excellent song for sure. I would definitely rate that up there above, um, above some of the other tunes for sure. Beautiful, Mike. Thank you so much for the time and and uh, can't wait for the Metalcore Dropouts Tour, man. It'd be great to see you guys again live. Appreciate it, man. Thank you so much for having me. Safe travels, man. We'll see you out there. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one.